Hey, what's going on? You know who it is. You know what it is. All right, you guys, PK. All right, man. Sometimes I wonder should Eddie Hearn change his name from Eddie Hearn to Eddie Haskell because he has a lot of Eddie Hearn. Eddie Haskell in him. In case you guys don't know, Eddie Haskell is a character from uh, a TV show from the 50s called Leave it to Beaver. If you under, like, <laughs> if you like under 40, you probably don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But that's, that's fine. But it's a show from the 50s and there was a character named Eddie Haskell. He was like the best friend of uh, Wally. And he was what you would call a, a sneaky dude, a delinquent. You know, he'd walk in the house and he'd just act like he was a saint. And he, you know, and say, hi, Mrs. Cleaver, what a lovely dress you're wearing. And, you know, sometimes he would stay for dinner, sometimes he wouldn't. And then, you know, uh, he was sort of every once in a while, he would pick at um, uh, Wally's little brother, which was Beaver, his his government name was Theodore Cleaver, but his nickname was Beaver Cleaver. And he was kind of like a pushover. People could push, you know, he was a pushover, the, the Beaver character. But Eddie Haskell was what you would call a sneak. He was the dude that would, you know what I'm saying, he would smile in your face and he the type of dude that would talk shit about you when you wasn't around. And he, that's what type of dude he was. And that's who Eddie Hearn reminds me of, of Eddie Haskell. Sometimes I wonder, should he change his name to Eddie Haskell Hearn or Fast Eddie? I told you, Eddie Hearn has a used car salesman mentality. The Honest Abe. He would say his name is Honest, knowing he crooked as hell. And that's how Eddie Hearn rolls. I mean, Eddie Hearn just, I, he just, like I said, He's great at lying. And it's funny like how Eddie Hearn loves to talk about other people's numbers. He loves to try to demean and sneak this and put down Deontay Wilder. But then as soon as Deontay Wilder claps back, then all of a sudden Eddie Hearn's, you know, disciples, his fan, fanboys and fangirls start defending him. Oh, why are you picking up Eddie Hearn? And why are you, you know, typical bullshit. But that's what you get out of Eddie Hearn fans. It's okay for Eddie to say something about somebody, but then when you say something about him, then, you know, then here come the Eddie Hearn, you know, the Eddie Hearn fans, the Eddie Hearn disciples, whatever you want to call them. But case in point, you know, Fred put out some very interesting news. I don't know how true it is, but Fred does his research very well, and Fred talks to a lot of people, you know, just like I talk to a lot of people. Now some reports are coming out that they had trouble selling out this venue. Now, of course, people got excuse after excuse. You know, um, well, he's fighting Luis and all that stuff. So, you know, that's why the tickets ain't selling. And that's, well, okay, look who he was fighting before that. He was fighting Big Baby Miller. It's not like Big Baby Miller was a, was a draw the last time he fought in his hometown. He didn't even draw like 6,000 people when he fought at the Barclays Center, you know? And he couldn't pack it in and shit. So, I mean, let's not make it look like Big Baby Miller was packing them in too. But like I said, it's always somebody else's fault. Eddie Hearn had the audacity to talk about Deontay Wilder's numbers, but then Anthony Joshua had shitty TV numbers the last time he was on on uh, Showtime. He had less than 200,000. You heard excuse after excuse. And, you know, they always do that to justify, you know, um, you know, Anthony Joshua not being what Eddie Hearn is making him out to be. Deontay Wilder's name and his, you know, is growing go globally. He's fastly becoming a household name. People are starting to say, hey, I know who that is. That's that boxer guy. Once they start calling him the boxing guy, then they start to find out what his name is. Then they're going to start saying, hey, that's Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder is already at a point to where he can't go certain places without, without security or an entourage, just a few people. Don't get me wrong. He don't take it to the extreme like 50 and 0 where he got like 
10, 15 people with them, noticeably. And then that's how you start like looking to see, oh, okay, that's, you know, but Deontay Wilder is at that point now. You know, people know who he is, man. You know, they really do. He's more popular than AJ, no matter how much people want to pretend. And I think he's running neck and neck with Canelo or he surpassed Canelo. Now, I know the Canelo fans are not going to like this, but I'm just keeping it 100. And to be honest with you, I really don't give a fuck what you think anyway. So, with that being said, let's get back to Eddie Hearn. You know, Eddie Hearn has sneaked this Deontay Wilder calling him some 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 guy from Alabama. He's a, He constantly tries to talk about his numbers and what he does. But as I said before, he keep talking about the zone. Well, Canelo's last fight on the zone flopped as far as ticket sales go. Now, they say over 1 million people watch the fight. Hey, that if that's what they say, I mean, whatever, man. But he's sitting up there. He's sitting up there saying that he don't understand why Deontay turned the, the, the zone deal down because Anthony Joshua wasn't guaranteed. And then Anthony Joshua is not really a the zone fighter. It's a fight by five bases. So basically... They could make this fight with Showtime if they chose to. So you have to ask yourself, who's holding up this fight? And as I said before, Eddie Hearn kept seeing people that know who Deontay Wilder was. He tried to demean him every step of the way to make it look like Anthony Joshua was on a higher pedestal than Deontay Wilder. But now we at this point, you know, the tables have turned dramatically. You know, and Eddie Hearn can't dictate and lowball and basically give Deontay Wilder these bullshit contracts that he was offering him. So I find it laughable how Eddie Hearn is just always contradicting himself and then always getting caught telling lies. It's just hilarious. That's who. Eddie Hearn reminds me of of Eddie Haskell. He walks in and says, hey, hey, how you doing? And, and all this and smile. And then, you know, when the do doors close and when people walk out the room or when he walk out the room, then he starts to show who he really is. And Eddie Hearn always shows who he is. He's a great talker. I've said this on more than one occasion. He's good at what he does. Trying to manipulate the media, smiling, giving people interviews and all that type of shit and that's why people don't challenge him and shit because he always gives people interviews and shit but nevertheless eventually I'll see Eddie Hearn again I always do I'll interview him again and I'm gonna ask him about the two for one deal he offered two tickets for, 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 for the price of one this fight is selling poorly. But nevertheless, this is your boy Tam Biz, and I am fucking out.